Ever since the inception of handheld consoles, we understand the notion that it will never be as powerful as home consoles. But as technology evolves and new handheld consoles released, we are able to recreate graphics that was once in our living room on a small portable device. It will always be fascinating to me that with every cutting edge game that once required a giant box tied to your home, will eventually be replicated on a small device powered by a tiny battery. To me, most handheld devices are just a portable version of a home console. A Game Boy Advance is like a mini Super Nintendo. A 3DS is like a small GameCube. And the Nintendo Switch reminds me of a portable Wii U. And today, with the GPD Win Max, if I had to sum up my experience with it, I'll say this is the closest thing we have right now to a portable PS4. Hello and welcome to part 3 of my GPD Win Max review. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at the PC gaming aspect. The WinMax I'll be using today will be running at the default 25 volts without any overclocking. All the games will be running on the 2TB Sabrin Rocket Q SSD with a 3200 megabit read speed and a 2900 megabit write speed. And they will only be running with the integrated Ice Lake Intel GPU with no external GPU involved. The benchmarking information such as the FPS counter, the RAM usage and more will be measured and displayed with RiverTuner on the top left of the device. Since the GPD Win Max is a special case where using different Intel drivers will get you different results, I want to emphasize that in today's video, I'll only be using the 8190 driver, as I've had the highest compatibility with most games I've tested. There are certain instances where a game will perform better with other drivers, and if that's the case, I'll be informing everyone throughout the video. All the graphical settings in games have been adjusted for the best performance and picture quality possible. If there are other tweaks and mods involved, they will be further detailed during the video as well. So, with literally millions of PC games out there, obviously there's no way I can show every single one of them. So, in an attempt to make this video easier for everyone to digest, I'll be showing a variety of titles that fit under these categories. Number 1. Games I feel highlights the strengths of the WinMax to warrant that portable PS4 title and we'll be making occasional comparisons to see how they hold up next to the console counterparts. Number 2. Games that are unplayable on the WinMax due to a variety of reasons, whether it be graphical or performance problems. So outside of all the positives I'll be going over, you also get a better sense of the device limitations as well. Number 3. We'll be taking a look at some games that saw the biggest improvements on the WinMax over the Win2. And finally, I'll be going over some key points I now have an answer to from part 1 of my review, specifically on things you should keep in mind if you're ever planning to buy a GPD WinMax. Before we start, if you want to keep up to date with future videos or just hang around and chill, you can follow me on Twitter. And if you're liking the video so far, maybe even consider subscribing. That way I know you guys are enjoying my stuff and that really appreciates it. Also a little something I'm trying out is an extra mean to support the channel. I've got a Patreon set up now. If you like my content and want to help make my videos even better, you can consider donating. Otherwise, my videos will always be free to watch. But without further ado, this is part 3 of my GP to Win Max review. This is going to be a long video, so sit back, grab a drink, and enjoy. So starting with some impressive looking games on the WinMax. I'm sure everyone has a very different standard on what is considered impressive, but keeping in mind the size of the WinMax in correlation to the PS4 and Xbox One, it'd be pretty unrealistic to expect 120fps, 4K at ultra settings from the WinMax. Alright, so here's the deal. The graphical settings between the two won't be an exact match, but if I'm able to replicate the picture quality and the performance to anything close to its console counterpart, I'd say that's a pretty fair comparison. Sounds good? So first up, we have GTA 5 running a 720p 30fps with a 75% resolution scaling. The picture quality and performance are pretty similar to the PS4 version, only with a reduction in grass density. Most settings have been put to the lowest, with the exception of texture quality, shadows, and motion blur set to high and it is pretty much able to lock at a smooth 30 fps at all time.
With an unlocked frame rate, the Winmax is still able to comfortably stay over 30, but running the game at the lowest possible settings never quite hits 60, so I recommend capping this game to 30 instead. Something worth mentioning is with the jump to 16 gigs of RAM in the Win Max over the 8 gigs on the Win 2, the memory leak problem is now completely eliminated. And up next with Forza Horizon 4, again running at 720p30, all the graphical options have been set to the lowest possible, with an exception of motion blur which is again set to high. Comparing to the base Xbox One, which is running the game at 1080p30, the Winmax never quite match up to the console counterparts. During hectic moments with a lot of alpha effects like dirt and smoke, the frame rate would occasionally drop down to the mid 20s, but 90% of the time it is able to maintain that 30fps pretty well. And up next, we have Dark Souls 3, running at 720p and the lowest possible settings. And since the game has some serious frame pacing issues and the lack of a 30fps freezing option, the game can jump between 20 to 60 all the time, which feels horrible to play. So by using River Tuner and locking the game at a 30fps limit, the game can now comfortably maintain that 30fps since the CPU and GPU are no longer being bottlenecked and causing those 20fps drops. The frame pacing problem is also completely fixed. The surprising thing is, since the frame pacing issues never got patched on consoles, especially the Xbox One ports, the game actually feels better to play here on WinMax than on Xbox One.
Moving on to Just Cause 3, we are again running the game at 720-30, with the lowest settings and motion blur set to high. Dynamic resolution scaling is also turned on for this game, but it doesn't seem to do much in terms of performance. We need the reinforcements! Group support inbound. Hang in there, ground team. He's using a coat hanger. The performance on the Winmax is very close to consoles in this case. So expect busy moments like explosions in physics bringing the frame rate down to similar numbers. So while the results aren't necessarily ideal, it is interesting to see how similar both of them can be. Initializing search protocol. Find the target as soon as possible. Additional support incoming shortly. Elite deployment authorized. Squad is down. One tower down. Yep. So time to find the other one. Sure you don't regret coming along? What? Are you kidding? I'm doing everything I love. Skipping. Freezing my ass off. So I have a question. Foz. Has he always been like that? Always.
If you've used any of the GPD Win devices before, you'll definitely have messed with low-end graphics mods, custom resolutions, or patches to even get the game up and running. And on the GPD Win Max, it is no difference. And here are some problems that stood out to me. In part 1 of my review, I mentioned none of the RE Engine games are running properly. So as it turns out, the problems stem from RE Engine not working great with Intel and DirectX 11. So by switching to DirectX 12 or Vulkan in the config file, while the performance in several titles are still not great, I'm happy to report all of them are now able to load without crashing. Other noteworthy ones involve several Unreal Engine titles, such as Spiral Trilogy and Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Both of these games crash within a minute of gameplay, as if there was a timer ticking down. And as it turns out, that had something to do with a bug in the Intel CPU, more precisely something called an Open SSL bug, which you can fix by adding a few lines of codes in Windows. Pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. But first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya! The next problem isn't necessarily tied to GPD and Max, more so PC as a whole. Games that lack certain basic options like switching to different aspect ratios in game will require a few extra steps to get running if you plan to play in 16x9. And Gears 5 is one example, which I had to fix by doing a custom script that switches the system resolution from 800p to 720p before the game runs, then switching back when the game closes. And most importantly, the abundance of config files editing and modding to get the game to a playable frame rate. But in a nutshell, if you never had a device like the WinMax and are planning to get one, you should know that these fixes are all standard procedures that every GPD Win owner are accustomed to by now. Back on the Win2, I often avoided games that pushed the device very hard to maintain a playable frame rate. Since while being playable, stressing a compact device like this for an extended period of time is never good for the device longevity. With the WinMax, Though the cooling is far superior than on the Win 2, there are still titles that I'd rather play on more capable devices. Here with Resident Evil 3 Remake, dropping every graphical options to the lowest is in fact possible to reach 30fps, but only just. And busy areas will often drop back down to the mid-teens.
However, there are some games that are just simply too much for the Winmax to handle. Some of these titles push the Winmax to its absolute limits but remain unplayable. Some are unoptimized ports that don't make good use of any of the Winmax capabilities or they run with graphical glitches, and few of them just flat out crash on you when you try to launch them. In my opinion, what really shines on the Win Max though are games that were already playable on the Win 2. So while the Win 2 is possible to push these titles to a decent frame rate, with the flawed implementation of cooling means the Win 2 would often overheat or throttles, or simply just shut down by itself after a while. With the same titles on the Win Max, not only are you able to get a far better temperature and battery, you can also expect to push some of these titles to the highest settings while maintaining full speed. We should take the highway, Vito. <clears throat> All right, you pulled off that job without fucking it up. Nice going. Yeah, but I almost got my ass kicked. I didn't live through the war just to die in Sand Island.
since part one of my review, I've had a better grasp on how I feel towards the Winmax. And so there are a couple more things I want to address before I wrap up this review entirely, which I think might be important to some of you. So with the Winmax increase in screen size, I realized you can't just get away that easily with low resolution like you could on the Win 2 anymore. Back then, I felt it was still acceptable dropping down to 540p, 360p, or heck even 144p. But with the Winmax's bigger screen and lower pixel density, anything below native don't look that great anymore, and you really notice them. With the massive battery in the Winmax over the Win 2, theoretically that should translate to longer playtime, but in reality, alongside the increase in battery, also comes higher power draw. So the actual usage when playing high-end games will only get you similar results to the Win 2 or even the Switch, which is about 2 to 3 hours. However, charging the Winmax only takes about 2 to 3 hours, and considering its battery capacity, that's pretty fast in my opinion. One thing I felt the Win 2 did better than the Winmax, however, is the speaker quality and placement. On the Win 2, it was facing upwards, placed alongside the keyboard and the gamepad, but on the Winmax, it's been moved to each side around the bottom. With the increase in fan noise, the overall tinny sound, and the higher chance where your palms would cover them, it just all added up to a mediocre at best sound experience. The 500GB SSD included by GPD in the Winmax is a welcoming upgrade from the Win 2's 128GB, but with the Winmax also being far more capable, I find myself looking to play more current gen games than ever before, and with games now easily going over 100GB, I'm starting to run out of space even with my 2TB SSD upgrade. To put it in perspective, using the default 500GB in the Winmax to me feels like using a 32GB smartphone in 2020, it just doesn't cut it anymore. So, in my opinion, if you're getting a Winmax, an SSD upgrade is a must. So the GPD Winmax is first and foremost an enthusiast device for us handheld enthusiasts, which we're willing to look past all the flaws, the high price and sacrifice performance just for that added portability. If you've come to the conclusion that a gaming laptop or a Switch gives you a better deal than what the Winmax is offering, then the Winmax is probably not for you. With GPD supposedly moving away from Intel and opting for AMD, and the rise in popularity with the Aya handheld and 1GX also joining the competition, the UMPC scene will only get more interesting from this point on. And with that, wraps up my complete GPD Winmax review. This video has been one of the toughest work I've ever done. I hope it was helpful to some of you out there, and I hope the video was visually appealing, as outside of scripting, a lot has went into filming and recording for this video. But otherwise, thank you all so much for coming along for the ride, and as always, thanks for watching.